that and it zooms all your tracks at the same way. So we can sort of zoom in a little bit that way. Now that I have this track selected, or this region selected, I can use this to zoom in on the waveform. So if I recorded something and it's really quiet, but I want to beef up what the waveform looks like, I can use this zoom setting here. You also have these zoom settings in terms of zooming inside. This is for your MIDI data. And then you actually have zoom recalls, which you can set, which are by default set up one, one through five on your number pad, on the actual uh, keyboard part, not the number part. So we can switch. And if there's a certain setting that you like, you can um, so all I'm doing is clicking and holding on the actual button. So if I like this zoom setting and I want to use this for setting one, click and hold and do save zoom setting preset. So I can go to another zoom setting and then if I go back it's going to be that zoom setting. So this is another very powerful way of zooming in and out, like if you had to do some serious editing on a particular track, uh, this is how you would be doing that or one way of controlling your zooms. There's also a really nifty way, and that is using what they call a zoom toggle. And you can hit this button, and it zooms in on that particular track, so it actually f takes, it fits the entire uh, span of your arrangement page. So you can turn that on or off. Going back to your original view, if you want to zoom in on a particular region, you can select it and hit zoom toggle and it'll zoom in on that particular region, which is really handy. And the key command for that is control E. That is your zoom toggle. You can see it's lighting up as I use it. Really handy stuff. Moving on, this is our different types of toolbars. This is your tool palette. You have a zoom tool. Right now we're looking at uh, the different ways of zooming. I can rubber band select around a region and it will zoom in on it. If I hold Option or Alt, you'll notice that the plus becomes a minus and it goes back to my original position. We have what we call uh, The trim tool, my trim tool allows me to trim regions, either the beginning or the end of a region. We have our selector tool. Selector tool allows me to select within the region. So if I wanted to select that right there and delete it, I can. Command Z is undo, so we can actually undo that. Didn't mean to do that. This is also where if I wanted to split this particular region, I can put my cursor there and again go up under your edit menu to separate region at selection and you'll see Apple E is the key command for that. So now we're, it's been split. I can also select this whole thing right here, go back to my edit page and we can heal the separation. Or you could have just hit undo, but if you had steps in between that and you wanted to put them back together, glue them, you can do it that way. We have our grabber tool, or our hand tool. The grabber tool is how we move our regions around. We have a scrub tool. The scrub tool allows me to scrub over any portion of audio. And then we have a pencil tool. Pencil tool isn't really working here unless I were to engage some automation. This is new in Pro Tools LEA. We're going to get into this a little bit, but they have now they have automation lanes, which are awesome. And they're just little drop down. Automatically, you can see uh, the volume. Uh, one thing I do want to point out under our pencil tool, if I click and hold, I get lots of different shapes. So if I wanted to create a triangle wave in terms of volume, 
you can set that up. So now I've just done volume waves on that. I'm going to undo it because we don't want to do that just yet, but just demonstrating that you have these waves that are built into it. Or you could just use the freehand to create uh, different shapes, envelopes. Um, and we'll definitely come back to that as we start moving through our program.